Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships Legends. Today I've got a capture the base mode battle for you on the Land of Fire map, and we are in the legendary Japanese destroyer Shimakaze, which I think is an appropriate destroyer to feature in a video, given that I've been featuring the Kabarosk a lot lately, or at least it feels like I have. I've been playing it a lot lately. So I jumped into the Shimakaze with its weird space camo, and I do happen to be running the space fish face commander person on here. I don't really want to go too much into detail on that build. It makes the torpedoes faster, essentially, and that's just about it. Otherwise, it's basically Tanaka, and because the base trait is what makes the torpedoes faster, it means you don't get quite as much damage as you would with Tanaka. Like, you know, the damage on these torpedoes is really extreme. They're basically underwater nuclear missiles, and then Tanaka puts a little bit of extra uranium inside or something, I don't know. Anyway, Fish Face makes the torpedoes faster. I think that's a little bit more useful than more damage because I think the extra speed on the torpedoes has to decrease the enemy's reaction time, whereas the extra damage, I mean, when your torpedoes already do 21,000 damage, is bumping that up to 22 really that big of a deal? I probably I don't think it is, at least not in comparison to the speed. We're also running the long-range torpedoes on the Shimakaze, the 11-kilometer ones. We launched some earlier at the Yamato, and I do think they're probably the best choice for this ship because, well, we launched them a while ago at a particular target, but there are a lot of destroyers in this game. You might have noticed that. And sometimes with these long-range torpedoes, well, you can get results sort of like this, where we take out the enemy Kagero randomly for our first kill of the game, and just like that, one of the enemy's destroyers is gone. We've got another one right here, the enemy Shimakaze. Torpedoes launched at him. We only launched two sets earlier, so we've got a third in reserve. We're able to tag him there, take him down to almost no health, and then finish him off with our guns in a single salvo. But meanwhile, our torpedoes are still going because they have such long range, and they do manage to catch the enemy Fletcher reducing him to almost no health. And just like that, almost instantly, the half of the enemy destroyer's fleet is completely eliminated, and in fact, three quarters of it is totally compromised. That Fletcher has lost so many hit points that any choice he makes throughout the rest of this game is necessarily going to be a choice between life and death. In other words, if he gets spotted, he's a one-shot kill for anybody. So he can't get spotted, even accidentally. And that really limits the amount of things he can actually do. Now, I don't think we can get too much into the theory of this game because of the limited time frame. This is a ridiculous blowout. And normally, I don't like to show these. But this game was a Kraken Unleashed for me. You'll see that coming up soon. And I thought the torpedo takedowns of three destroyers was just too ridiculous to not show on YouTube. But I should talk a little bit about maybe why these kind of games tend to be blowouts. Now, there are only 18 ships in a game because there are nine ships on each team, right? And in this particular game... The enemy has four destroyers, or had four destroyers, and we had and still have five. So we have the destroyer advantage, although the enemy team does have the larger ship advantage. It has five ships composed of battleships and cruisers, whereas we have four ships composed of battleships and cruisers. And the reason these games spiral out of control so quickly is because destroyers with their stealth are so good for spotting. There goes the enemy Fletcher, by the way. I told you he was a one-shot kill. And also, it's good to use the guns on the Japanese destroyers for these kind of reasons. Where was I, anyway? Right, yeah. The 
destroyers are so stealthy and they provide the eyes for the team they do a lot of spotting and that cannot be understated the value of it take for example this side of the map where we've got i think two enemy yamatos and an alaska versus basically just one gk pushing in toward them from behind us now if we weren't here this gk would of course be at an incredible disadvantage he's got two battleships and a cruiser shooting at him so he'd probably go down pretty quickly but because i'm here and there's another destroyer off not too far there's a huge torpedo threat to these battleships they can't push in toward the gk and if I wasn't so close to this Yamato, I could get into a position where I could spot them all. And our GK, if he wanted to, could utilize island cover. And he could play a lot safer. A lot of choices would be open to him because the enemy ships would be spotted. He wouldn't necessarily have to be spotted by them. And then he could decide how he wanted to try to inflict damage on him. Whereas they would have to get into a position to spot him and keep him spotted and getting into that kind of position might pose some kind of risk to their ship. That is the main reason, I would say, why destroyers are so influential, but also they're very, very delicate. And if they're spotted, they can be taken down pretty easily. Now, obviously not all the time. Sometimes it can be very difficult to take down a very good destroyer player, even when they are spotted. But being spotted is so risky to destroyers because they are so delicate and because they have so few hit points. So you combine that incredible amount of influence of a destroyer with the fact that they're also the squishiest class of ships in the game, and when you get games that have, what is this, nine destroyers in them, well, they can spiral out of control really quickly because destroyers can die so quickly. And so here we are with eight ships left on our team versus a single enemy Yamato. And I, of course, have four kills. So I'm going for the Kraken. I, the Kraken is just the icing on the cake after those torpedo hits on the destroyers earlier which again i thought was just too entertaining not to put up but now i am going for the suicide torp maneuver which is something i advise against because performing it usually means either you and the destroyer are going to die or you're going to lose a lot of hit points and trading a destroyer for a battleship which is how these suicide torp things often happen is just not a good trade but when there's only one battleship left and you're guaranteed to win why not right anyway we're spotted by the enemy Yamato we still have one set of torpedoes in reserve we assume the enemy Yamato is going to turn to shoot us, which he should be doing now. And actually, we kind of underestimate the speed at which he could turn his guns. But we still get that last set of torpedoes off. And we're at such close range that it's impossible for him to dodge. So we are going to be able to secure that kill along with our Kraken Unleashed. So I thought it was an entertaining game. I hope you thought so too. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow with a stream for the new update. And until then, goodbye.